you are simply trying to replace an outlet or switch and the stinking wires are too short oh no what are you gonna do are you gonna rewire the whole house heck no let me show you a simple way so you're removing an old outlet or switch and you notice the wires are too short in fact the electrical code says the wire should extend three inches in front of the box or six inches from the back of the box now if you look at this this is flush and way way too short it is extremely frustrating you're trying to uh put on your outlet and switch and you won't have near enough room to get in there and bend the wire around make a little hook screw that on it will not work have you heard of these simple snap on wire connectors they're called wago w-a-g-o they used to be difficult to find. I couldn't find them anywhere. Now they are more accessible and easier to find than ever. They are in all the home improvement big box stores, certainly on amazon.com. The link is in the video description down below. I want to show you why these are so magical and so easy to use. If you look in here, not all the configurations are simple splice kits. They have these type, these connector splice kits that are facing opposite directions. You simply snap it over the wire. These will solve the answer to our problem. How do we extend these wires? This will make it so easy you won't believe it. Now, if your old wiring is bent, they have a hook on it. You do want to straighten that out. And you're going to use your brand new Wago splice connectors. These are going to extend them. You're going to put it over the existing wire and simply lock it down. Let's go ahead and do that on all three while we're here. All the way down to it bottoms out lock it down that was the ground the white is the neutral and the black wire in your box is the hot all the way into it bottoms out and lock it you see that lock it on down okay now that we have our splice connector extenders in we are ready for new wire okay i want in total about three inches for each of these connectors so we'll cut it about right there and look at that that's all we need off of this huge spool of wiring next step you're going to cut off the sheathing off of the wire carefully take your utility knife score it down the middle don't worry it will not cut the interior wiring it's just following the path and you're going to unpack that and you're going to pull out the conductors that's what we want and there's the ground this will be so easy you won't believe it way better than any other methods okay now with our wire strippers and I'll put my favorite wire strippers in the link down below. Simply find the 14 gauge opening, clamp it on down. Grounds are already stripped. You don't have to worry about that. That's bare copper. Now with the Wago connectors, they're quite forgiving on how much insulation to remove off your wire. If you look in here, there is a depth gauge. You see that little wire? That's going to be your depth gauge. Did a better job on this one. That one is exact right where they recommend. Now with our three wire extenders at three inches ready to go, yours may be longer, yours may be shorter, depending on your unique situation. We're gonna simply color match, black to black, white to white, and the ground to the ground. So we're gonna drop it in the Wago connector, snap it in place, literally locks it in. It could not be easier. And then here's the ground. And the black is the hot. Of course, if you're doing this repair at your house, the power has already been off, so you're working safe and efficiently. Now with our wire extenders in place, we can see that it does exceed three inches in front of the box, so we are meeting code. Wago connectors are UL listed for safety. Time to put in the new outlet. I will tell you, there's a big difference in quality. This cheap $1 outlet requires you to bend the wire around the screw. It's a little bit monotonous, tedious, annoying. For $2, you can be elevated in improved quality outlet. Now these have these awesome pressure plate switches. So when you loosen them up, there's going to be an opening there that you'll drop the wire in. And when you tighten it on down, it literally just clamps on the wire for you. And you don't have to bend wire. You don't have to do anything fancy. So easy to use. So when you push to the screw, you'll see that opening. In that opening is where you'll drop the wire. And then when you tighten that screw down, that pressure plate will clamp onto the wire as tight as can be. Can you see that? So this is the method I've gone with. The black hot wire all the way in. Tighten it down nice and firm. Now some people like to do it in a uh, sequence that is ultra safe. So they like to start with the ground, which is this one, and then the neutral, which is the white one. 
and then lastly the hot. That would only be if you weren't sure that the power was off. If you were sure that the power is off and you have no doubt about it, it's, it's no big deal. Just install the uh, wiring sequence any way you want. There's only three wires here. I bet you'll get it right. This is the little hook for the ground. On the outlet, you do need a hook for grounding. It'll lock around the green screw. The green is a universal color for grounding. And then we're gonna secure that. You can see that metal bar there. So it locks in pretty secure. Everything tightened up, we're ready to gently fold the wires back in. Remember you have those lever locks there. Bonus tip, a viewer one time told me with using Wagos when they were shoving it back into a box that was full and crowded, that the levers actually caught on something and flipped up and loosened. So if you were concerned about that, you could take electrical tape and wrap it around your connectors so they're super, super tight. In addition to that precaution of electrical tape, some professionals do teach to wrap the terminals of the outlet with electrical tape. A roll of electrical tape is 99 cents, really inexpensive. And by wrapping those exposed terminals, there's no exposed metal, so nothing can short out. Gently fold the wires back in the box. All right, you're going to put your cover plate back on. Next, you're going to test your work with any outlet tester of your choice. Okay, your new outlet is working great, testing properly. You've extended the wires to meet code three inches in the front of the box. It will last for years and years. Hey, I knew you could do it yourself. I'll see you next week.